Hey, welcome back to day eight of the quantum leap experiment. How is it going? How is your quantum leaping working out for you? I hope you have been enjoying these. We're nearly at the end of the sort of official quantum leaping stuff. There's so much more we can get into. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about one of the last pieces of the puzzle uh, from Price Pritcher anyway. And then some of the stuff that's been coming up because, my friends, it is the solstice, which is really awesome. And today I'm heading off to uh, a little solstice get together. Um, and I haven't been to one of these things in yonks, but I've been really um, happy to have connected with some people that do this kind of work. Uh, the spiritual stuff, the grid work, all that good stuff um, locally. And they've been doing it around Scotland as well, which is really lovely and f have felt the calls to the same places I have. And yeah, it's just been really nice to connect with them. So going there tonight, tomorrow, headed back to near Roslyn Chapel to the Rose Line. Uh, it's my little nephew's birthday and um, a little solstice baby. So we're headed, <laughs> headed over there um, tomorrow, which should be lovely. Um, all right, the, the adventure continues. So really, if you haven't made your quantum leap yet, why not? Is it time to give yourself permission to do something different? Right, so there was, let me just, oh, I was, wasn't gonna talk about this, but suddenly it seems like I am talking about it. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I was just on a podcast as well on the Sacred Travel podcast. We've just recorded the first of what is going to be two parts because there was so much to talk about in terms of grid work and Scotland and what's happening here and the activations and all of that good stuff. So, uh, I'm going to be doing part two of that on Monday. It felt really important for us to have that conversation on the solstice. Uh, there are so many bits of this weaving together. Like it blows my mind that the girl who's doing that podcast is in Switzerland. And if you listened to maybe not yesterday, but the day before that big long chat I did about the Dan Brown movie stuff. Uh, she is in Switzerland, which is the home of time, the heart and the home of time. And there is a link back to the Clava Cairns uh up in Scotland at the centre of our Scottish pentagram which links back and is part of the healing of time that is happening at the moment so there's just a lot happening there's a lot going on energetically and I didn't realise she was in Switzerland and I was talking about Switzerland and she's like well yeah I'm here and I was like oh my goodness this just gets so weird the stuff just gets so weird and I was referencing Matthias De Stefano's work and um she's like oh I'm meeting up with his group tomorrow <laughs> In Switzerland and I was like like mind blown um, so this stuff is just it's just wild guys and the other part of this um, really strong energy that's been coming through is, dra is all about the dragon energy um, if you know anything sorry a little itchy nose um, what is the spiritual significance of that I don't know um, I don't know what it means anyway so uh, we a lot of my retreat um, and all of this stuff around Scotland has been coming back to the dragon. The awakening of the stone dragons that have been sleeping, the all the dragons I saw in Sweden when I was there. Um, the Loch Ness Monster is actually a dragon, not the Loch Ness Monster. And, uh, and then I discovered a new ley line that I didn't really, I hadn't really investigated too much called the Bellinus Line or the Spine of Albion. And the more I dug into that, and it has loads of connections to dragon energy as well, I was like, what is this dragon energy all about? Um, so we'll get into that in a second. But I wanted to just um, do a quick recap, right? If you've been on this quantum leap exper experiment journey with me, we're just going to do a quick recap of 14 traps uh, that you must avoid. And this is in the book. I am reading it. Um, it is this one here quantum leap strategy all right so the traps you must avoid if you want to quantum leap so don't be reasonable right don't limit your goals to what you think you can have instead uh, of what you want right so go for what you truly desire in your heart um, and not what, just what you think you can that is really limiting um 
don't go at it half throttle. You've got to um, go full on. Don't live life with a lukewarm heart, right? Be excited, be passionate, find something you are passionate and excited about. Um, don't just keep doing more of the same, right? It's a trap. So don't keep trying to go do the same thing harder. You're never going to get there. That is the recipe for burnout. Um, don't fall into the doubt trap. Don't stop believing um, in your goals. Uh, don't believe in your limits more than... Uh, don't, wait a minute. So you should be testing your limits, not believing in them. Uh, don't fall into the faith in the familiar trap. This is about getting out of the norm, changing your usual routines and how you do things. Um, don't get caught in the methodology trap, right? So don't. So stop focusing on the how you're going to get there. Focus on the end result. Stop focusing on that bit in the middle that we have no control over, forget that. Uh, don't fall into the what I can't see isn't there trap because that's all about you feel like you have to do it all yourself and that feels massively overwhelming and impossible, right? There is an ultimate higher power at work helping you at all times. Um, don't play it safe. You're choosing the wrong risks. Don't fall into the passiv passivity trap wishing for what you want instead of pursuing it, right? Get active. This is about actively chasing what you want. Um, the Don't fall into the failures aren't allowed trap. Um, be willing to make mistakes. Don't fall into the comfort junkie trap. Uh, don't be afraid to confront your fears. Um, the use it or lose it trap, open to your gifts, right? open up and see what's there. Uh, don't fall into the preparation trap. Don't get bogged down in all the planning and just going round and round in circles planning and not actually doing the thing. And don't fall into the perfect timing trap. There is no perfect timing. There is no right set of circumstances. Just go ahead and do it. There is no right time. So I just wanted to sort of round off with that little reminder of some of the key takeaways from the last week's lives and now let's just have a moment to chat about this dragon energy so it's just been everywhere and it's obviously the chinese year of the dragon as well and if you didn't catch the last live i was talking about how the loch ness monster is not really a monster it's actually a dragon and um it is traversing loch ness uh, which is the pineal gland of the earth of Scotland and it's there to help with the conscious awakening of the planet. So there is a lot going on with this stuff and um, to me this dragon energy is sort of represents kundalini energy. So the, it's, that, it's that weaving, it's the... Um, and to me also the dragon is the representation it's sort of like the light and dark the yin and yang the masculine and the feminine it's it's the sort of perfect sacred marriage of both it's the weaving together of heaven and earth and that really feels like this overarching theme of everything that we're moving towards and everything that we're doing all of our healing work um to move towards obviously the dragon energy is is fire but it's also wisdom and it can be used it's not just to um it's not just something to be used in anger it's there's a deep wisdom and knowledge it's about transformation um it's it's also a deep protector and guardian and um the more that we resist this this movement and this energy and this this i'm doing this 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 like flowing energy um, the harder it is, the more we resist it, the harder it is. So if you've been sort of having dragons come to you or feeling this dragon energy, um, yeah, let it, let it do its thing. I feel like it's really popped out for me in the last few days. Like I actually wore, wore my serpent ring for today. Um, I feel like it's, it's just really there it's just wanting to be seen it's wanting to be worked with it's wanting to be spoken about 
it's wanting to be worked together in this beautiful um sacred union so when i talk about that it's not the masculine feminine and the things it's not about gender it's about the everybody has masculine and feminine energies within them um sometimes we can lean more towards one than the other sometimes we can be out of balance with our leaning towards one rather than the other um but really this beautiful dragon energy is about finding the balance between both like men kind of masculine and have masculine and feminine energies women have both masculine and feminine energies you can be more at one end of the spectrum than the other but um healing those uh maybe the judgment if you're in a female body but you judge the masculine then you've maybe maybe there's an element of self that you're judging if you you might have been also even if you're in the feminine body you might have been pushing the feminine away right there's a lot of us that are more in our masculine energy than in our feminine because we've judged the feminine energy, right? So it can be really quite um, confusing if you are pushing one away, pushing them both away, you know, there, there seems to be a collective confusion about all that stuff, right? But we are here to um, heal a lot of this stuff and heal um, our distortions around it. Um, and ultimately the journey is about creating a sacred union within yourself right, to balance both of those, to be, um, to not be judging or hating on either one of them, um, to be tapping into the good parts of both, right, the masculine is more about the protector, the planner, the, um, the more linear side of things, right, it's sort of, that's more that part, and if you're in, if you're a woman but you're in hustle mode, you're probably more tapped into that masculine energy, on the feminine side, it's more about the good part of it is more about intuition and um, following the flow and and that kind of beautiful receiving energy, um, which is important, right? Also in business, right? Both parts are important um, for all of us, but a lot of us can get stuck in the shadowy parts of both sides. I had no intention of talking about this today, but we are. So the sh more shadowy part of the masculine there's light and dark masculine we'll talk about it in general we don't need to go into all that but the the more shadowy parts would be controlling right so they're a planner but are they also controlling so that might be controlling situations or others or even themselves right they can get very bogged down with that it can also be aggression and anger and all that kind of side of things and then on the on the female side the more shadowy or suppressed side of it is not receiving or mm, can be quite conniving it can be seductive and that can be good or bad sometimes so yeah there's a sort of murkiness around um that as well we can be caught up in martyrdom and um yeah there's there's some shadowy sides of both that both need looked at and healed there are just a few examples of the the sort of parts and qualities of that information so ultimately we create the sacred union the balance within ourselves that balance isn't going to necessarily be 50 50 um for some people it's going to be 80 20 for some people it's going to be 60 40 it's going to be different for everybody right but it's creating a really healthy natural balance um between those within ourselves i keep doing this with my hands um feeling that sort of weave of the dra dragon energy and then you can go out and ultimately create sacred union with somebody else who hopefully is quite balanced in their energy as well um and that's the sort of ultimate journey with it yeah so dragon energy uh anyway invitation if you haven't checked out my retreat yet hit me up i will send you more details there's obviously information in banners and um all sorts on my page um let me know we're still on early bird last little piece of early bird time let me know if you're interested and i can send you more details and that's where we're at all right thank you so much for being here i'm going to keep this one short and sweet and um i will see you on the other side i might continue doing some more of these um but i feel like i need to regroup for a second and decide what they're going to be about i don't want to just come on and ramble every day i want to ha i quite like having a little bit of structure so we'll see anyway i wish you all the best happy solstice enjoy tonight um again it's interesting i suppose in time tonight 
is part of this dance between the light and the dark as well, right? That's what the solstice is about. Maybe that's part of this dragon yin yang energy, right? We're at that tipping point where as of tomorrow, this might be the longest day, but as of tomorrow, we start tipping back into darkness, right? It's going to start getting darker and darker uh, every day from from tomorrow, even though we've not had our summer yet. The sun is desperately trying to come out today and apparently next week it might be nice but like uh yes might have to up my vitamin d intake so enjoy the solstice friends and i will see you soon